reading in verse 35. I'm going to give you a chance to get there. Mark 4, beginning in 35. If you have it, please signify by saying amen. Amen. And we'll stand together for the word. Mark chapter 4, beginning in 35. Read verse 35 with me, if you will, please. And the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass unto, over unto the other side. Let's read 35 one more time. And the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. When they had sent away the multitude, they took even they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, Carest thou not that we perish? Let's read 39 together. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. 40, let's read that. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Someone shout, no faith. No faith. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God bless you as you are seated today. Turn to someone and say, the other side. The other side. Turn to someone on the other side and say, the other side. God bless you. As you're seated all today, so happy to see first day to come in with us. My friends, this series of teachings comes to us at the conclusion of a in-depth session of parables where the Lord not only delivered a parable as we see throughout Mark chapter 4, but then he explained why he used parables and then he broke parables down. Now after such intense teaching, the Lord had been surrounded by people who were constantly uh, asking for healing, asking for a miracle, asking for a word, so much so that he became exhausted. And being exhausted, we see in Mark chapter 4 that he told his disciples that he needed to get away. And he needed to get away because he had expended so much energy and so much had been demanded of him and so much had been drawn and taken out of him that he felt an emptiness that caused him to retreat from his public ministry. And he says to his disciples who were then gathered with him at the shore on the west coast of the Sea of Galilee, he says to them, let us pass over unto the other side. Now, my friends, some of us may look at this and wonder, how could 
the Son of God, the Savior of the world, become tired? How is it that he became so exhausted that he needed to get away? It's because he gives us his glimpses of not only his divinity, but his humanity. He reminds us in this particular instance that he was not only the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, but he was also Mary's oldest son. And he needed to recharge his batteries. He needed to uh, get, get some fuel for the journey. My friends, how many of us just wear ourselves all the way out and then at the point of being worn out, we push ourselves even further until we began to feel worthless. Like a rag. Worn out. And at that point, we are no help to anyone else. Even though we come to some conclusion that we are the only ones that can do it. Everybody depends on us. Everybody is waiting on us. Everybody needs us. You mess around and accidentally die. And you'll find out that the world will continue to revolve. It will continue to spin. And people will find a way to exist. Even without us. Jesus gives us here the presupposition that at some point you've got to stop and recharge your batteries. They had taken so much from him that he said that same day after he finished teaching, after he finished preaching, after he finished sharing the word, he says to his disciples, I need to get away. And in order to get away, I can't hang around here. Amen. Sometimes you need a different environment, saints. Amen. Amen. You can't get your real healing. You can't get your total breakthrough. You can't get your refreshing in the place where you get drained. All right. All right. You can't come out of alcoholism in the liquor house. No, let me go ahead and talk to the tree. Place that quiet. <laughs> you, you can't break your crack cabin in the crack house. <laughs> you can't break your gambling habit at the bingo hall down the street. You got to change. Somebody say change your environment. You got to get out of that place where you lost what you need. And so he says to them, let us pass over unto the other side. Yeah. And my friends, that's a key for us today. Yeah. Let's go. Let's Jesus doesn't make a suggestion. Jesus doesn't call a committee meeting. He doesn't take a vote. He says, let us pass over to the other side. And they saw that the matter was serious. So much so that they didn't go try to pack lunch. So much so that they didn't go get supplies. So much so that they didn't go look for uh, the necessary uh, uh, bills and vitals that they may need on the other side. They, The, the word says that they took him even as he was. Yeah. In other words, they moved quick. Sometimes when an emergency comes up, we don't have time to do the normal things. We don't have time to bring the usual equipment. We don't have time to grab what we would normally take with us. We have to move right then and right there. So in 36 it says, and when they had sent away the multitudes, they took him even as he was. 
He was tired. He was weary. He was ready to go. And he said, come on. We're leaving now. And they took him without pretense and they boarded the ship that he normally traveled in. And when he got to the ship, he went to his place in the ship. He went to the hinder part of the ship. Some call it the stern of the ship, the rear of the ship. And at the rear of the ship, the pilot would be there and he had the ability to navigate the ship from the rear. And the pilot had a pillow that he would sit on to try to navigate or pull the ship in different directions. Right. Jesus went to the stern, the rear of the ship, and he did not hesitate. All right. He laid back. Yeah. You ever been so tired that as soon as you get home, yeah. you don't even take off your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> You just go stretch out in the first place that looks inviting. Yes, Might not even take your glasses off. I'm going to sleep with my glasses on. I woke up 3 o'clock in the morning. Just tired. Jesus went straight to his spot. And the word says that he fell asleep on the pillow. Thank you, Lord. It lets us know we need to get some rest. If the Lord needs to get some rest, we need to get some rest. So he goes to his spot and he doesn't make any announcements. He doesn't ask any questions. He lays down and he goes to sleep. While he was laying there in the comfort of sleep, something was happening in nature. Yeah. <laughs> See, they were sailing across the Sea of Galilee. And the Sea of Galilee is sunk down between two high ridges. Not what we would call mountains, but, but high ridges. High elevations on either side. And whenever the cool air from the Sea of Galilee would rise, and meet the warm air coming over the ridge, coming over the hill, it would collide all right, all right. right over the Sea of Galilee yes. and create a whirlwind, right. a tumult yes. that would begin to sway the water. Like, in a, have you ever noticed when you get in the bathtub and you run it full of water that the water is still and quiet? But when you get in, the water starts to move and it rises. It's trouble because you have brought to the water what was not formerly in the water. And the water begins to move. Here's what happened when the warm air coming over the ridge collided with the cool air rising from the Sea of Galilee. A storm happens. And when the storm happened, yeah. it began to rock the boat. Y'all yeah. might have heard the song, Don't Rock the Boat. <laughs> but the boat got rocked. <laughs> and the boat got rocked so much that it began to take on water. But while the boat was taking on water, in the back of the boat, Jesus was still curled up. Yeah. Out like a light. Yeah. Totally asleep. Yeah. And those who were on the boat, they were at this point <coughs> terrified. Yeah. Yeah. Now, my friends, I find it really interesting that they were in such terror because most of them were fishermen. Oh, Big Mouth Peter was on board. Wow. He ran a fishing business. <laughs> James and John were on board. Right. They were subcontractors for their daddy's everything. Yes. 
These experienced fishermen, they get on the water. They get in some storms. They have been in some windstorm. But now, they lost their courage. All of a sudden, they got weak. They forgot that they had come through a whole lot of stuff. Oh, that's preachable stuff right there. Because some of us forget that the Lord has brought us through a whole lot of mess in our life. Some of us get in the middle of some chaos and conflict and we act like the world is going to end. It didn't end when he brought you through back in the day. It won't end now. Oh, I, I remember how upset folks got when, when Donald Trump was elected president and oh, it's the end. I was like, we've been through worse than this. We've been through more than this. This ain't nothing to get excited about. The same God that brought us through the stuff in the 60s and the 70s will bring us through this. Because God hasn't changed. We're the folks that have changed. God has to rearrange. We're the folks that have rearranged. All you need to do is hold on to the subject in hand through the storm. God Almighty. Peter was all upset. Jesus was stretched out. And you know, you got to wonder, how did he sleep through that? All of the lightning. All of the thunder. Uh, the, the wind coming over the hill sounded like a freight train. The waves splashed. Some of the water must have splashed on him. But he was so comfortable in his sleep that that didn't even move him. Well, the reason why he didn't wake up is because he knew his father was handling everything. He knew that God was in charge. He knew that the storm could not apprehend him because his father was in control of the universe. And when you have that kind of comfort, you can go in a fiery furnace. And even though your captors got slayed by the fire, you can go in the fire knowing that God is going to bring you out of the fire. When you have that kind of confidence in God, you can get thrown in a lion's den. And instead of panicking because there's ferocious lions in the den, yeah. you can go lay across the lion's back like a mattress yeah. and sleep all night long yeah. because you know who is the maker and sustainer of the universe. Yeah. So Jesus slept through the storm because the storm didn't scare him. The storm was a vehicle to show the glory of God. The storm was designated for one purpose. And that purpose was to assassinate the son of the living God. What are you talking about, preacher? Satan knew that if Jesus made it to the cross, you and I we have remission from our sins. Yeah. So he wanted to drown Jesus yeah. on the Sea of Galilee uh -huh. so he would never make it to the cross. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah. He was trying to block your blessing. Yeah. He was trying to get in the way of your sacrifice. Yeah. He wanted Jesus dead then yeah. so he couldn't hang up high yeah. and stretch out wide. Yeah. But Jesus woke up he woke up because the sailors on board lost their sea legs. <laughs> he woke up because the big shot fishermen weren't as brave as they put on the beach. And they went back there 
and they bothered Jesus. Just trying to catch a nap. They, they bothered him. And they came at him with uh, their little petty concerns. about to drown. As if Jesus wasn't concerned about drowning himself. Master, you don't even care that there's a storm all around us. Master, how can you sleep through this? And we're about to go under. We're about to capsize. Jesus got up from his pillow. Stretched out real good. Look around at the storm. And I bet Jesus, I can imagine Jesus said, I, I, I know you. I, I know what this is about. I know what you're trying to do. You want to assassinate me and all of these innocent ones. So he stopped the whole process. Stood up on the boat. Raised his hand. Yeah. And he said, Shalom. Yeah. Someone say, Shalom. Shalom. Shalom is to say, peace. Shalom is to say, shut up. Shalom is to say, calm down. Shalom is to say, I got this. Shalom, be still. Don't move another muscle. Don't flinch. Don't say another word. Be quiet. Yeah. He halted the storm in mid-storm. Yeah. And the winds died down to a stop. Yeah. And the ocean that was the, the, the sea that was tossing back and forth calmed down. And the ship glided through the water. And Jesus looked at them and said, what's wrong with you guys? You were with me when I made the will of hand of the man in the synagogue whole. You were with me when the woman was bent over in half and I caused her to stand up straight again. You were with me when Peter's Mother-in-law was dying from fever, and I took her by the hand, and she got up and cooked us some collard greens. You were with me. You know what I can do. What happened to your faith? What happened to your trust? What happened to your belief? Just because you went through a storm, you lost your faith all of a sudden. Just because you stuck in the wall. You lost your faith all of a sudden just because your heart was broken. You lost your faith all of a sudden just because they told you you wouldn't make it. You lost your faith all of a sudden. What happened to your trust? What happened to your belief? What happened to your faith? When the storm come in life, how do you handle your faith? And the reason this is so ironic and the reason why this is so incredible is because of what was said in verse 35. What happened in verse 35, preacher? And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, he saith, let us pass over unto the other side. Do you see that? Amen. Now, that's that's written in red, right? Amen. Amen. That's the red word? Amen. So, Jesus must have said it, right? Amen. Let us Amen. pass over Amen. to the other side. It wasn't a suggestion. It wasn't a question. It was a demand. It was a command. Yeah. Yeah. It was a covenant. Yeah. Yeah. He said, we're going yeah. to the other side. Yeah. So what happened? They didn't hear right. Maybe they got it mixed up. Oh, right. Jesus told them, we're going over there. Yeah. And my friends, when Jesus said, we're going somewhere, yeah. you better believe we're going 
the way. But he promised me that we'll go lay down to the other side. We may, yeah. oh Lord God, may you know what the night is.
scroll through the rank. Some of them go 75 miles, some go 50 miles, some go 25 miles, some of you go 10 miles. Some of you walked across the park. But if you came out in the rain, and the Lord that showed you he's waiting for you on the other side, you ought to go ahead and praise him while you got the pain. You ought to be the Lord.
Then I said, Lord, help me be steep.